Orchestra to sing uh, from our hymn book CGS. I want to sing him 115. For you to be changed, unbelief must be gone. So this evening, be gone unbelief. My Savior is near. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 6. 1, 2, and 6. God. God. 
begun on me.
to sing that chorus again. Without the, you gave us the cord. Uh, God wants to hear us cry. Amen. That our cups must be filled tonight. Amen. Please give us the cup. prayer I want to sing, he touched me. Amen. God is going to touch you tonight. Amen. At the last verse, we will stand up to sing, which is the second verse. We'll stand up to sing. After that, we'll be led in prayer. Chorus. He touched me as we remain standing with our eyes closed, Brother Raji will come forward and lead us in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank for the choir, Lord. We thank you for your everything you have provided us. Lord, we are expecting great things happening tonight. Lord, we are expecting many souls are getting to save tonight. Lord, we ask you to thank, sanctify many souls. We thank for this wonderful ground you have given us, Lord. Lord, tomorrow we are going to have baptismal service. We are expecting many harvest of souls, Lord. Lord, if anybody is here sick, I want you to send your hand and touch everyone, Lord. Lord, I, I put in your hands the speaker tonight. Fill him with your words. And we are thirsty for your word. We are hungry for your word. Lord, we want our cup to be filled tonight. Lord, we don't want to go home with the empty cups from here. Lord, thank you for going to fill our cups. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, for our testimony service, we have a kind of order tonight. First of all, we're going to listen to the choir in the name of the Lord. It's the choir rendition for the first special. And then we have um, some people that just joined a group in the UK called Senior Citizens. Those people joining, they can see those who have joined before, they will be of help to them. But anyway, in particular, we have two 
that we know of, and if you are part and we don't know, please let us know if you don't mind to reveal your age. Um, those that turned this um, 60 today, they became part of this group called Senior Citizen in our midst today. We have two that I know of. Can they stand up, please, wherever they are? Sister Jaye here from uh, Birmingham branch, the one working at the um, breakfast um, place, looking after all the arrangement there. Then we have Sister Kofola Dende on the gallery, working with our people in the dining hall. We want to say happy birthday to them. We all listen to the testimony of Sister Kofo in the morning. So to open the testimony tonight, our second senior citizen of the day, Sister Evarista, we give a testimony. And then we have other senior citizens. They are not the only two. Actually, I thank God I'm one of them. Okay, we have more senior citizens. We're going to um, give them the room tonight. All the senior citizens after Sister Ajayi um, has testified. The narrow street to see this man from Kalili just a carpenter, some say, leading fools astray. Yet many kneel to give him praise. And in his eyes they glimpse the power that sees the hearts of all men. And he knows his father's mind. He speaks his father's words, for he comes in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, there is work in the name of the Lord. There is hope in the name of the Lord. is nearly gone when there's nothing left to do but just depend on you and the power of your name and when we call upon your name your strength through weakness to show Extend the master's hand when we come in the name of the
just want to thank God this evening for power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. I thank God for the salvation of my soul, for the sanctification and baptism of the Holy Ghost. I thank God for everything. It's not an easy road, but I thank God for seeing me through and counting me worthy to be here this evening. It's the grace of God. Coming to the camp is the grace of God. When I came to the camp on Tuesday, we went out to do some shopping. Came back on Tuesday, as soon as I went into that cabin, I couldn't come out. I was in the cabin, I couldn't walk. I came here, I was sitting down here ready for the evening service, and a sister came and said, why are you here? You are up and down, sitting up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down. Why? She took me back. I couldn't come out of my room. But I thank God for the prayer of the people of God. Amen. On Wednesday, I said I wanted to come. They said, no, you still have to rest. This morning I woke up, the sister was there. She said, how do you feel? I said, I'm okay. She said, you sure? I said, yes. She said, stand up, and I stood up. And I could walk. Amen. And I walked from my room to the breakfast room. Amen. And when I got there, they said, you are not looking okay. I said, I am looking okay by the grace of God. Amen. I had my shower, and I went in to see the people of God there. I, just, I don't know what to say. I just say thank you. Amen. I just want to thank everybody Amen. for their prayers and everything. Amen. And I was so surprised that they all came up with a cake and everything and started singing. And I'm like, who am I? A dust. I am just dust. Nothing but dust. But I just want to say thank you. I want to appreciate everybody. And I appreciate God for what he is doing in this gospel. For the love. For the mercy. I just thank God for everything. Amen. If I want to start enumerating, I won't finish it. But I give God all the glory. I came in contact with this glorious gospel. I thank God for the ups and downs. I thank God for the messes. I thank God for my family. We are work in progress. Uh, my joy is to the brim when I see one of the boys uh, play the trumpet. I thank God for how God has helped us. In our house, the Bible is an open book. And uh, I always tell the children that, uh, the same thing that David told uh, Solomon, that if you serve God, God will be fond of you. But if you don't serve God, it's a problem. I thank God the way he has uh, kept us together. Amen. Even though everybody will have our differences. But the love of God is above all. Amen. So I really thank God for how he has been helping us. I thank God for joining Mercy's. This year, it pleased God to take me to East Africa. I attended the camp meeting there, and God saw me through and brought me back safely. Amen. I thank God for my present wife, how God is helping her, Amen. how she's been a mother for the family. Amen. She is my angel. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. And I know that God still has many things for us. Amen. All the prayers we have put in the bottle, God is going to pour them out. Amen. And some of the children that seem to be that they are yet to understand and how the fight of the devil, with the prayers of all of you, we, we can say like Joshua that for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And I told God that for all of them. I want to thank the Lord. I cannot count all and all the Lord has done for me. Re uh, uh, this year I went to Portland and I came back safely. He took me through the valley, took me through the mountain. I'm so happy to be with the children of the Lord. I can't count my blessing. I know he, he, um, uh, I need to serve him the more. I need to, to obey him. Your people of God, pray for me. It's a privilege to be able to give a shout for what the God that we serve can do. God blessed me particularly because he gave me a grandmother that was grounded in God's word. And she took me by the hand at five that you will serve God with me. God saved me first when I was 10 years old. Then I went my way. But our God is merciful. He found me again. I was privileged to look at the history of apostolic faith in Europe, and I saw my parents there. 
as part of the foundations of this gospel in Europe. And I bless God that I can say that my daughter was here and two of my grandchildren are here. The life that I have now is no longer mine because I died on the road in 1979. But God gave me a new life. This God that we serve is a great God. I will serve him to the end. I, I thank God tonight for saving my soul. I thank God for sanctifying me and filling me with the Holy Ghost and fire. I thank God that God has been taking care of me. Fifteen years ago, my world fell apart. When I lost my husband, my hope was gone. I lost my brain. People that know me then, they know that uh, this woman, she is gone. But I thank God today, God restored that brain. Yes. I will be in the mix of people, I will be feeling lonely. I will be crying right down deep in my heart. Because the one that I love is no more. But I thank God today. He took care of me. He's taking care of me. He's taking care of my children. He's taking care of my grandchildren. I give him the glory. I went to Portland. First week was fine. Second week, I fell ill. Even I dragged myself to the, uh, to the office. They called a, a, a doctor for me. It was something else. For good two days, I could not even move. If I stand up, I will fall down. Because I was feeling dizzy. But I thank God for the power and the blood of Jesus. Yes. The children of God rallied around me, and, and they took care of me. God healed me. Yes. In this camp meeting, yes, day before yesterday and today, <laughs> Satan struck again. I, my head as if somebody can change this head and replace it. My head was like, it's, it's going to burst. But here I am today. Yes. Jesus can heal. Yes. I told God, I said, I'm not going to miss any meeting. The one I'm missing company in Portland, this time around, Florence, we are not missing it. I managed to come down here yesterday, and then day before yesterday, I managed to come. But today, here I am today. I'm healed. No more headache. Satan is a liar. He's only trying. He cannot get hold of me. Children of God, whether I still have a long way to go or a short way to go, I want to see this, this just face to face. Please pray with me. Introduce God's gospel to me. But that has been a very uh, potential in my life. Otherwise, by now I must have died. But I must have forgotten about me. But what I'm saying about this, this uh, evening is that um, uh, there was a time where I was terribly battered with a home office situation. That was so terrible. But God see us through. It got to a point that uh, we have to come to home office to be signing every time. But God, Almighty God, all my family will skate through the orders. Citizenship will skate through the orders. God said to us in this UK. Not only that, being in home office bondage, you cannot travel. My mother is travel is sick, sick at home. I can't even go and see her. But God gave me the opportunity before she died. I was able to skate through the uh, home office situation. I was able to see her before she died, and God helped me through. My son also, before she, well, I was coming to camp. Because my other, my other girl and my wife couldn't make it. I said, well, I was talking to her. Let us stay, stay behind. I didn't know there's a miracle waiting for us. But he told me, Daddy, no, I will go. Let's have a daddy and son relationship this time around. And as God we have it, God save his soul. God save him in this camp meeting. So not only that, this camp meeting, this camp meeting we have, is a, is a, is a testimony on his own to my life. There was something I was following in my mind, but I thought it was going to happen. I mentioned it just twice on that place, just twice in this camp meeting. In, on Wednesday, I started hearing a call here and there. Settled. I was surprised. I just want to assure you that God has purpose for everything. He has time for everything. In this camp meeting, God is hearing prayer, and God is going to answer our prayer. Please pray for me. Pray for my wife that God should, you know, rooted my wife in this gospel.
maybe it's you and then maybe it's me so one will be in sorrow and tears will start to fall no comfort peace no happiness they'll see so one we have the troubles be filled with misery maybe it's you and then maybe it's me maybe it's you and then maybe it's me who oh, build an nest to face eternity when the day has come and gone he will take somebody here maybe it's you and then maybe it's me someone will die tomorrow as many have today this life is so uncertain we can see someone the call will answer we know not what will be maybe it's you and then maybe it's me maybe it's you and then He will take somebody here, maybe it's you, and then maybe it's me, maybe it's you, and then maybe it's me. <laughs>9 and so it was when the cloud abode even unto the morning and that the cloud was taken up in the morning then they journeyed, whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining there on, the children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. 23. At the commandment of the Lord, they rested in their tents, and at the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the commandment of the Lord by the hands of Moses. Amen. And then I go to 10, uh, verse 29 and 30. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Raguel the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are joining unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Amen. Come thou with us, Amen. and we will do the good. Amen. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. Amen. 30. And he said unto him, I will not go. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. May that not be your response tonight. Amen. Blessed invitation. Amen. We thank God for this camp meeting. Amen. We thank God for the glorious gospel. This is a gospel that we are so sure of. Yeah. 
uh, lead straight way to heaven. Amen. With the Lord's name be glorified. Amen. I need not tell you much about the benefit of the gospel. You've had wonderful testimonies from the senior citizens of how God delivered, of how God saves, of how God can keep. They are so convinced of those testimonies. And that is exactly what Moses was trying to do here in terms of convincing his father-in-law to join with them to Canaan land. We remember the suffering of the children of Israel where they were in Egypt. You know, how a place that was meant to be a place of respite, Goshen as it were, uh, suddenly turned to a place of sorrow for them. And then uh, they cry unto God. You know, they pray unto God. You know, the, the enemy of their soul did not want them to leave. You know, but God, you know, through a mighty hands, yeah. delivered them. That was the testimony of Israel. That was the testimony of Moses. You know, he was convinced you know, that the God of Israel that delivered them out of Egypt you know, equally has power you know, to take them to Canaan land. And so he was turning over. You know, we are ready to go. We are moving on. If you had had uh, Moses that time, are you ready? He would tell you, I'm ready. And then he was telling Hobab, how about you, you know, come along with us. You know, let's go together. Uh-huh. You know, uh, when we talk about Canaan, when we talk about that land, you know, uh, uh, Moses um, um, mentioned it to uh, Oba. He said, that is the land you know, that the Lord has spoken, <clears throat> that I will give it to you. you know, he said, uh, for the Lord has spoken good. You know, concerning Israel. You know, he said again, the land which God himself, you know, promised that I will give it to you. Uh, We know know, uh, uh, more about that land, you know, the land of uh, Canaan. Um, If you check um, Exodus chapter 1, Exodus um, uh, chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1, 8. Now there arose a king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph, and said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when they have fallen out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get us out of the land. Even right in Egypt, God was blessing the children of Israel. You know, regardless of the, uh, the problem they face, you know, with them Pharaoh and the, and the rest of the uh, Egyptians, God was blessing Israelites. Yeah. And then God promised them, I'm going to take you to a land, you know, that is flowing with milk and honey. You know, he told them that they are going to inherit so many things, you know, a failure that they never planted. You know, they are going to dwell in houses that they never built. That's the place we are joining to. Those people that stood up that gave testimonies, they are so confused in their hearts, you know, that God is taking them to a place. Yeah. And through their testimony, what they are telling us tonight is that, you know, how about you come along with us? You know, our God will surely do the good. Yeah. With the Lord's name be glorified in Jesus' name. Yeah. Moses' request is a type of gospel call. Yes. It doesn't matter where you hear it whether in a garden like this, when you hear you need to be saved, that's the gospel call. It doesn't matter whether it's in your local church that you hear it, that you need to be saved, that's the gospel call. And whether it's your husband that has been saved, telling you, my wife, my darling, how about you get saved, that's the gospel call. You want to pay attention to that. 
How about parents to children? May the Lord deliver all our young people. Amen. I'm a young man myself. Uh, but, you know, it saddens, uh, you know, anyway, our hearts. I will say our heart because I've got my own children as well. And uh, when you see them, you know, show you some little, little sign of disobedience. And then you wonder. You know, as little as you have, you know, this seed of, this root of sin is already, you know, portraying itself. You know, how much more? You know, the older ones among us. You know, the heart of the parent are, you know, are, are grieving on daily basis. You hear the prayer request in the prayer room of parents, you know, crying out that God will save their children. Yeah. I believe God will answer that prayer. Yeah. I say God will answer that prayer. Yeah. But you are, if, you are, if you are that child and you are in that condition, you know, and you are causing heartache for your, for your parents, and you are making their heart to grief, and you are causing them to cry day and night, and you are like Hobab. You are hearing tonight that you need not answer the way Hobab answered. Right. No. You can answer Moses, I will follow you. Amen. I will go with you. Amen. I will journey with you. Amen. The Lord help you. That was a poor response on the part of Oba. Very, Very poor indeed. Um, uh, if he had known who was calling him, perhaps he wouldn't have responded that way. All right. That the person calling him is not his son-in-law. It, it was not Moses. It was great, the great God of heaven. Yes. Oh, yeah. It was his creator. Right. You know, his maker. He will be losing so many things by not following the children of Israel. You know, don't forget when they continue on that journey, you know, God gave them you know, so many wonderful fig trees. Uh, Obab missed that. He will have been a, 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 a first-hand witness of God's you know, power to deliver his people. He, he missed that. They hurt manna on the way. There was, so, you know, there was water you know, in place of, uh, of dryness. Obab missed all of that. He became separated from God's people. When you decide not to join in with the children of God, what, what you are saying is that you, you want to remain with the people of the world. Then you are separated from God's people. There cannot be any benefit in that. Obab missed all of that. But I'm praying that God will help you tonight you know, to take a decision in your heart you know, to join in you know, with the people of God. Uh, Father testified earlier on, and I, I, I was just uh, thinking with him you know, that, that, God, that God will help me. You know, he said that the Bible is an open book in his house. I want to do that as well. I want to trust the God of heaven. That's the gospel call. We want to respond positively to that. Yes, and that call, you know, continue, you know, to ring, you know, throughout generations. Uh, in this case, it, it was between uh, Moses and, uh, and Hobab. You know, today we are hearing gospel call, even tonight. You know, it was rendered earlier on that sooner, very soon, you know, we, we are going to see that king. Right. But can you, can, can you sing that song? Can you say it you know, for sure that you are ready to see that king? Matthew chapter 22. Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 22. Reading from verse 1. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like, is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servant to call them 
that we are bidding to the wedding uh, and they will not come. That's another form of invitation to, 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 to a wedding feast. We, we thank God for Jesus. You know, who we always teach people in a manner that they can understand. It's using passable, uh, parable uh, in this passage. You know, so that people can actually you know, understand you know, what he was teaching. Uh, we are all familiar with, with wedding feast. Uh, what is popularly called reception uh, 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 in our time. I take that to be the most interesting part of marriage. Uh, I don't want to go to marriage just to go and witness the vows and uh, just sit down in the church and listen to some. I want to be where food will be served. I, I want to wine and dine you know, with other guests. I want to have opportunity you know, to have and share with the couples. You, you can't have that in the church when solemnization you know, is going on. But when you go to the reception, that's, that's when you can take all those benefits. And then the king said, My son, just go to the town. All the people that have been bidding, let them come. And the Bible says they will not come. They are behaving like Hobab. Yeah. They don't want to go and attend that, 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 that wedding feast. We understand from the scripture that that king uh, is, is God himself. And the son being referred to here is Jesus Christ. Okay. And the wedding feast is nothing but the marriage supper of the Lamb. Yeah. Brother Shinogunle mentioned that for us in the morning. Uh, that when tribulation will be going on here on earth, you know, all of us, yeah. all of us, yeah. you know, because I believe that tonight, yeah. if for those that are here to be saved, yeah. they will come here yeah. you know, and be saved. Yeah. And so all of us yeah. we will be at that marriage supper yeah. of the Lamb. Yeah. But some will not be there. They say they will not come. Uh, with, with no just reason. The church decided not to come. And then the man, you know, being, being, my, 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 you know, being, being, uh, being so kind, he said, please go again. Please, just go again. Go and remind them. Go and tell them in fast four. Tell them which are bidding. Behold, I have prepared my, my, my dinner, my hoxing, my fatness are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Uh, yeah. I wonder if any person can declare you know, something like this to say that all things are ready. When, when we did our home wedding, uh, we, we had to print a limited invitation card. Uh, we were mindful of not wanting to just um, uh, cook too much uh, and incur debt uh, uh, you know, that we have to settle after our wedding. But this is the king of kings. Yeah. The artists are ready. Yeah. You can come in and wine and dine. Yeah. And enjoy yourself. Yeah. A brother mentioned about the, 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 the banquet hall of the king of kings. How about that? I want to be there. Yeah. You God count you worthy. Yeah. You God count me worthy. Yeah. Fast five. But they make, they make light of it. They made light of it to make light. I checked that in the dictionary. It is to downplay, to berate. Just something that is important, you want to take it as not important. Gospel is important. Yeah. That's our life. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, without the gospel, we are nothing. And then you want to take it lightly? You can't go scotch free. And then to make matter worse, you know. So those ones, they made light of it. You know, so some people, they went on their ways. You know, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, to their failure businesses, secular life. When you, when you are hearing about the matter of salvation, you don't want to postpone it. You know, some people want to finish their education before they get saved. Some want to make sure that they have well-established business before they get saved. 
Uh, who told you that business will ever you know, get to fruition? Death can come at any time. But you want to be ready. Yeah. You may God help us in Jesus' name. Yeah. And the remnant took his servant and entreated, entreated, entreated them spitefully and slew them. Pardon my pronunciation of that word. To slew the servant of God. Today you might not be holding gun to kill the servant of God. I not be holding cutlass to to to, uh, to massacre anyone. How about your response to the gospel call? By not responding positively, as it were, you know, you, you are slain the servant of God. You are slain the preacher of the gospel. Your parents that are turning night and day. I, I refer to Christian parents. You are slain them. But you can't go scotch free. But you cannot bear that. You cannot bear the consequence of that. And that's why I'm praying that God will deliver you tonight. Amen. What was the consequence for these people? But when the king had the rough, he was wrought. Who oh, will not be wrought? If on my wedding day, after printing invitation card and I sent out to people, and then no one uh, uh, turned up. I will be wrought. I won't be happy. God is not happy with you. You don't hear to the call of the gospel. He destroyed their city. He burned up their city. I'm telling you, this world, you know, someday will be burnt up. But we thank God. Amen. He will still not stop there. You know, he said, my servant, please still go to the city. Uh, this time around, uh, don't, don't limit the catchment. Uh, to, uh, just, just go. Uh, anybody you find. Amen. Fast 10. You know, he said, both the bad, the good, just ask them to come. In another gospel, he talk about the maim. He talk about the poor. Uh, whosoever, let them just come in. That's the gospel call. Amen. To whosoever we. Amen. And we thank God Amen. that here tonight Amen. we have people Amen. who used to be robbers. You know, but God saved them. Amen. So it doesn't matter your state of mind. If you are thinking, oh, I'm, 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 I'm really, really, you know, so sinful. Then Jesus really, really wants to save you. Amen. It doesn't matter the depth you have gone to. You can be bad. Jesus wants to save you. Yeah. If you think you are good, if you are good at all, uh, Jesus wants to save you as well. Yeah. But the one that breaks my heart, that's the one that we have in verse 11. And, and that's the danger of sitting on the fence. We don't know whether you are in or out. That, that's more dangerous. If you want to come in, you better come in tonight. Yes. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. We, we had in the morning. That, that, that garment is nothing but the righteousness of the saints. Yes. It's nothing but the salvation of your soul. It's nothing but your, your, a life of holiness. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to pretend. If you are in the gospel, you are in the gospel. Right. You want to go out uh, where, where I don't suggest you do that. But we want to know where you stand. Uh, Provision was made. The man has made effort. He was invited. He has come into the wedding. He perhaps was holding the invitation card. And then all he needed to do was just to release the invitation card uh, and get a gown. Well, he just went inside. And then you mingle with other people. What, what kind of boldness is that? that that's boldness that kills. 
that that bonnet that sent someone to hell. I don't want to have that kind of boldness. And then you are coming here, you are going out with the children of God. Uh, you see people, same soul around you, and you are not safe, and you are feeling comfortable. That confidence is a destructive confidence. I was, I, I'm just wondering what, what was going on in his mind. You are sitting in the, in the dining, you saw everyone putting on the apparel, uh, and then not, not, your heart is not pricked. Maybe he was just chatting with them, and then he was just greeting. Yeah, where are you from? Oh, you are from Scotland. Oh, how are you? Oh, you are from Highland. Oh, good to see you. Happy Kamiti. And then that's all you've come to do. May God deliver you. Amen. Amen. I love fellowship. I love to socialize. I love to meet new people. But not at the expense of my soul. You want to do first thing first. You want to go to the altar. You want to pray through. You want to be saved. And that's when the fellowship can be sweet. Verse 12. And he said unto him, Friend, how came thou in Eda, not having a wedding garment? How, 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 how did that happen? How, how, how on earth will somebody be here and on Sunday? You still want to go back home and save? Please come to the altar. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. We thank you for your word. Lord, come and help us. Oh God, tonight save souls. Oh God, touch our hearts. Sanctify, oh God, baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. As we are here, oh God, on this altar, Lord, we pray that, oh God, you will answer each and every prayer request. 
Lord, come and do it for us, O oh God. We thank you. We give you all the glory as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.